when we talked about the all-star starters, one of the guys that didn't make it that has consistently been a starter has been James Harden. And, and James Harden right now, there's a lot of drama around him with the Brooklyn Nets. There was rumors about James Harden wanting to go to Philly, Philly wanting Harden. But the Nets have came out and said, we're shunning. We're shunning trade deadline offers for James Harden. They're not trading him. What are your thoughts on that? Is this the correct move? I mean, to me, I think it's quite obviously the correct move because they have a ch- they can win a championship this year. With all the things that are going on, they can still win a championship. So, JC, I'm going to go to you because you're the Nets fan here. What are your thoughts on the James Harden stuff? The Nets basically reassuring fans that, nope, he's not going anywhere. He's sticking with you guys for the year. Uh, well, <clears throat> as a Nets fan... Uh, it's not, it's kind of relieving because, you know, obviously in the last, I think two a year and a half, two years with the big three has been together where they've all been under contract I think it's a year. They've only played 20 games together. Um, so we haven't really consistently seen this team on court together. Um, the few times that we have, they've looked pretty dominant. Um, even just the one time this season against Chicago, against the number one East, uh, team in the East at the time, you know, we saw what happened when they were all three together on the court, or even the series in um in Boston last year. It took a Jason Tatum 50 ball uh, master class performance for them to even get a win. But um, <clears throat> I think it's the I think it's the right move if James Harden's really bought in. And at the end of the day, none of us, including the Nets organization, will never know if James Harden is really bought in. This you could look at it from both sides of the spectrum. Let's say the Nets keep them. Let's say they win a championship. Oh, my God, it was the best move. You know, we we got the big three. We got our championship. James Harden wants to leave. That's fine. doesn't matter. We we had our end goal. But if we go into the playoffs this season and, you know, we get hurt or, you know, we lose flat out, we just lose, and James Harden leaves, you're sitting there like, okay, so we just lost. We we, we traded James Harden for four first-round pick swaps and, and, and three trades. Uh for three pieces, Jared Allen, Karis LeVert. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, those guys were, you were going to have to give that up. Um, so it, it really just depends. James Harden has a lot of leverage in this situation. I mean, if James Harden ends up leaving, you could have, it's James Harden. At the end of the day, I'm pretty sure there's a, a bunch of NBA teams that will call and give you some hefty offers for James Harden, even though it's been in a, a statistically a down year for James Harden. I mean, this is a guy who's averaging 23 points, eight rebounds, and second in the league in assists. So, um, for, for, in my, in my opinion, as a Nets fan, I think it is the right move just because we haven't seen all three of them on the court together consistently. I think had we saw that last year and we didn't win. Okay. You can pull the plug and be like, okay, this is probably not going to work, but I'm of the mindset that I'm not going to break something up if I haven't seen it to the full extent and the full extent for the Nets and their goal is to have the three of them healthy in the playoffs and just see what they can do and see if they can win a championship. So I'm, 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 I'm on the Nets side. I, I agree that, you know, they, they shouldn't really answer calls. I think they should go all in this season and let's just see, you know, if this team, like how James Harden says, we're unbeatable when we're, when we're all three together. So let's see James Harden, like all three of them play, you prove it. So I'm, 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 I'm agreeing with the Nets on this, on this stand. I don't think you should trade them. I think you should let it just ride out. So, Riv, I saw you laughing over there. What are you laughing about? Oh, because your boy didn't make the all-star starter. That's why it's funny. Oh. My boy did. So I was just laughing at you about that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that was funny. Um, No, no, no. The Nets made the right decision. You shun. Listen, I just want to give some insight here. This free agency, the teams that have cap are the Detroit Pistons, the Oklahoma City Thunder, like teams like that. In order for James Harden to go to a competitive team, It'll have to be a sign and trade. So either mm-hmm. way, Brooklyn, you look good because you'll get something back. So shout out to you guys. You know, you'll get something back, maybe a Ben Simmons or something like that. Or if you <laughs> want to go to Miami, Tyler Hero again. We'll try that one more time. But, you know, you get something back. So that's that's good in a sense. But, yeah. Do the, do the Mavs have money? Nah. They have to make some moves. Uh, okay. But, um, okay. yeah. I agree with I agree with both you guys, though, with Joel and J.C., if the Nets are healthy, if the big three are healthy, there's no team in the like right now, there's no team in the East that can really, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's gonna be tough to beat those three guys, you know? Especially James the Harden. Bulls. Yeah, definitely the Knicks too. But I wasn't I shouldn't even <laughs> said that because they're not even in the playoffs right now. But um <laughs> it's gonna be tough to beat those those three guys, you know. So I think like JC said, just getting these guys healthy is the first priority. And I know it sucks, you know, injuries damage a lot of teams. 
And if you look at the big threes in the past, you know, the Bulls, the Ma the Magic Johnson and Kareem, you look at Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and them boys in Miami, this is like the first big three that's seen devastating injuries like this to their main guys, and they really haven't got the chance to play together. So it really, like, sucks for Brooklyn fans that they haven't got to see it. But at the same time, you know, you look at this team, Patty Mills, L.A., they've been solid for them. You know, Joe Harris, hopefully he comes back and he doesn't shoot bricks in the playoffs. You know, Kyrie Irving, hopefully. we've seen him on the road. Kyrie Irving still looks amazing. He still looks like Kyrie. Kevin Durant, when he's healthy, he looks like the best player in the NBA. Don't know why you said one of the best. He's the best. And I said top two. No, he's one. And then um, Harden, <laughs> you know, Harden, he's still on a on a bad year, 23 and 11. So he's just as good as the Rosen. Yeah, whatever. He's still 23 and 11. So I think, you know, shutting everything because no, realistically right now, you trade James Harden, you're not going to get nothing back, like nothing get in value, value back yeah. for James Harden. Ben Simmons hasn't played. So even if you make that move, and Tobias Harris is mid as hell. So even if you make that move, it's not going to be the same for Harden. So I, I think they did the right move. Ben and Tobias for Harden, I'm sure they would give a draft pick too. That doesn't sound horrible, especially of given course the you fact say that, that you're a Ben given the fact fan. The Nets need a big. Who's okay. the big there? <laughs> ben Simmons. Uh, you put him. You put him. What do you mean? Ah, uh, you put him fact. at the five. What is Embiid going to do to him? Hey, that's probably food. That's probably food. That's food. That's food. Kill him. That's food. That's food. All right. So in terms of the, the trade barbecue. situation uh, of James Harden, uh, the Nets deciding to shun it, it, it makes a lot of sense. You want to see this big three together. You want to see James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant in the playoffs, all three together. We saw it for one series, and it was essentially domination outside of one game where Jason Tatum had to drop 50 in order to pull out a W against them. This big three together is the best offensive firepower we've ever seen collaborated together. It's just a matter of if they can stay on the court. I understand not wanting to trade it because you want to see this through. You didn't trade for James Harden for you to give up a season and a half later and and basically say, all right, we're going to ride with someone who's basically a part-time player right now and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, who, albeit is as great as he is, is a little injury prone. However, Last season, when you needed him most, he was your star player, and he played like it, no doubt about it. However, you still have to have that in the back of your mind that he is – it's possible that he could go out at any second. God forbid you don't want that to happen. Even me, who does not like KD by any means, I never want to see a ball player go out to an injury. You want to see him – if they're going to go out, it's going to go out to a defeat to another team, like, like against Milwaukee, unfortunately, where his foot was just a little bit too big. Sorry, JC. Uh, that being <laughs> said – Ultimately, James Harden, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, that that brings fear into other teams' hearts. When you have Kyrie Irving and James Harden on the same floor together, the two of them click a little bit different. You start to see Kyrie Irving's Kyrie Irving. And, and I, I, I hate that in terms of how great he is. His greatness kind of gets put to the side a little bit because we're so more focused on his off-the-court uh, issues or what's going on with him outside of basketball. When he's on the court – he is one of the most, if not the most gifted ball players we will ever see in our lifetime. And it's adamant that when he's on the court, the Nets are significantly better. And in terms of the who means more to the Nets, the more you see Kyrie Irving not on the court, the more you understand how valuable he is to this Nets team and how essential he is if they want to really uh, go for a championship run. I agree with the decision to keep it together. However, Given the injury history, I am a little bit scared. James Harden has been as durable as it gets throughout his entire career. Unfortunate that the one time where injuries had really plagued him was last season when he needed the most in the playoffs. This season, he's been their most durable. He's been their most consistent, but his play has deteriorated a little bit. His EFG is a career low outside of his rookie season. His field goal and three-point percentage has been just nowhere near the James Harden that we're used to, but that probably has to do with volume. He's not seen the amount of volume that he was accustomed to in Houston. I think you need James Harden to be at the James Harden level that we saw in Houston if the Nets ultimately want to compete for a championship. So was this a good idea by the Nets organization? Yes. Is it possible that they don't get the end result that they're looking for. I think so. Oh, you can go. 
HP. Yeah, yeah, you HP. Oh, oh I I was like, I ain't know, but honestly, I I agree. I think that I think that it's best that they probably didn't make the trade or try to trade James Harden because as you all said, it's it's hard to get rid of the talent that they got rid of just to see them pass it up in a year or two. Like you said before, this is probably the most scoring that we have ever seen on one team. I think that when they are fully healthy, at the very minimum, they should be in the NBA Finals. Um, and I think that no matter who wins, you know, it's going to go down to a game six or seven. Um, it is sad to see James Harden kind of get injured like he has been in the past uh, because he always has been really durable. Um but I, I would probably go ahead and stick it out because at the end of the day, as you all said, if they win a championship, cool. If not, you can always do a sign and trade and, you know, get something better uh, down the line. I pose a question that I wanted to ask you all, though, with all that being said concerning Brooklyn. Do you think it was worth it to get rid of Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie and Jared Allen Ooh. or James Harden? And the reason I ask this is because, yes, we understand that James Harden is a way better basketball player than all those people. But again, yeah, yeah, probably. But if we look at kind of like that Sacramento conversation we were talking about, the fit sometimes is more important than the talent. On paper, Kyrie, James Harden, KD, it looks like something you would build on NBA Live 2007, you know, Mm -hmm. but you look at rim protection with Jaron Allen, you look at a 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, point guard and Spencer Dinwiddie who was getting everybody involved just as James Harden does now, not the same type of offensive firepower, but then you still have Karis LeVert on that team who's a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, wing who can score the ball. I know he's not looking great in Indiana. I just think that that's a bad situation for him. If you have Kyrie fully healthy, you have KD with those guys there and the bench and the future draft picks, do you think it was actually worth it to make this trade for James Harden? I think it was still worth it. Like you mentioned, Lavert hasn't been that good in Indiana. He he's yeah. much better in, in Brooklyn. He would have been a sixth man. That's much more suited for what he can do. He would have been like a Jamal Crawford, Lou Will off the bench, and just be an instant spark plug guy. Spencer Dinwiddie is sorry. Oh my gosh! It, for one, yeah, he missed an entire year, he missed an entire year in Brooklyn. And yeah. Spencer Dinwiddie's always rubbed me the wrong way in how overconfident he is. I understand you got to have confidence in yourself, but he he's always rubbed me the wrong way in that in that sense. And then he goes to Washington. He gets paid. He's finally a feature guy. And Bradley Beal's basically calling everybody out like they're all trying to fight for a spot in the league. And Dinwiddie <laughs> is a jock. He's inefficient. Jared Allen is the only one that hurts because you look at Hurt. Cleveland right now, and, and Allen is their second best player. I would put him above Mobley right now, even though that is still that is really close because Mobley is he's going to be such a great player. Mm-hmm. Jared Allen is is basically a younger Rudy Gobert. And if the Nets had that right now with KD and Ooh. Kyrie, that would have been a, a great fit. Drew is tight. <laughs> but no, with all I'm that tight. I'm not uh, tight. It's just it's a little bold. It's not you said Rashawn <laughs> Holmes is bold. better. I, 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 I was wrong. <laughs> I know. Listen, I, I took my cap to you and told you I was wrong there. I no, said no, I know, but Sean Holmes had been it's playing. not. It's not both. He's been playing well. A- a- Allen is putting up. Allen no, is putting wait, up similar numbers to Gobert. Listen, it's, it's tough. Uh, defense. It's, 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 the defense is just like Rudy's here, and as good as Allen is, he's no. just not. Hey, on hey, hey level. listen, listen. For one, I'm not just saying that out of the blue. Joe Ingles, who plays with Rudy, was on the JJ Redick podcast and was like, Jared Allen is essentially a younger Gobert. You know. How can your own teammates say that? That's crazy to me. Allen is great. That's you know he's good. He, he is. He Allen's really, really good, bro. No, Allen is tough, but I think, uh, you know, it's it it's tough to say because Karis Levert. Like if we go back in time, and if we look at it, COVID is gonna happen regardless. Kyrie's gonna be a part time. Like that's still gonna happen. So do you trust Kevin Durant? Karis LeVert, who's hit, he's he's it's looking like he's forever gonna have injury concerns throughout his career. You have Kevin Durant, Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, not Jared Allen in Cleveland. I feel like Jared Allen in Cleveland is a different Jared Allen in Brooklyn, offensively, not defensively. I feel like he's the same guy defensively, but offensively, he just looks a little better in Cleveland. I, I feel it's like Darius that's Garland to Darius Garland. I don't think in Brooklyn he would have been that offensively. So you get a slightly less offensively 
but still the same defensive guy, Jared Allen. And then Spencer Diddy, who was coming off an ACL injury, so he would be back. I think, like Joel said, you have to make that a Harden deal because, like I said, Spencer Diddy, Diddy was coming off an injury. Karis LeVert is always hurt. Jared Allen, as great as Jared Allen is, he's not going to give you that offensive output to help Kevin Durant. And then Kyrie's going to end up being a part-time player anyways. I think getting James Harden, essentially a guy who we've known for all his career, plays every game, plays every playoff game. He's an Iron Man. He's going to play. You need a guy like that in a regular season to mm-hmm. carry you when you're, the injury guys get hurt because he's the guy who helps you get to the playoffs. And then you figure it out from there. I respect it. You know, I feel very bad for what James Harden has had to go through in oh, Brooklyn. God. Nets fans not appreciating him enough. Oh, and God. also just the lack of talent that the Nets have assembled around him. When KD and Kyrie are out, it is evident that the team stinks. It's James Harden, DeAndre Bembry, James Johnson, Patty Mills, Mills and Dayron Sharp me starting river. sometimes. Cry me a river. Cry me Literally, a river. cry me and me. Hold on, hold on. I don't care, bro. The, James <laughs> Harden. <laughs> James. I mean, look, you're forgetting Kyrie, Joe Harris. Those guys are out. I'm not They're forgetting anything. What I'm too. saying is, JC, we had a segment. We literally had a segment mm-hmm. before the, the season Nets started injuries, on bro. the They're Brooklyn crazy. Nets having the deep, like having one of the deepest teams in the league. We didn't know Paul Millsap was that wash, bro. Bro, Joel. I told you. I told you. I let you know. Yeah, Paul Millsap's washed. Paul Millsap is really washed. Who's that? The yeah, with the to the, the point Brooklyn, where I was just like, just do we even need to injury. have a Paul Millsap conversation? Why? <laughs> Paul Millsap's not that dude. But listen, that, that you be- comp- this is what I'm about to say. James Harden's worst team in Houston was when he was with them in his first season. The Omar Ashik and Chandler Parsons and Monty Jeremy Unis. Lin. And yeah, that team, that team, that roster is better than this Brooklyn roster when you take away like Katie and Kyrie and stuff. Like, the, the supporting cast is god awful. Like, they don't have great role players. Am I right. supposed, but, but, am but, I supposed to feel your, bad? Most of your impact yes. players are hurt, bro. But can I say Joe something? Can I, can I, can Kyrie's part time, Kevin Durant's out. Like, James Harden is, is the second most doubled player in the NBA. Can I say something real quick? Just I just want to, you know, Are we chime in on this little bro. bag. I it's injuries. Wanna... No, no, no. It's, it's like this this whole Crimea River segment is funny. Um, <laughs> That's you what you were doing with Steph crazy. last year. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Steph was actually, it was actually literally, he was actually literally alone on offense. Like, that was actually a fact. <laughs> wait, so Hard like, like, is not alone on offense? Huh? Bro, Hard? he has Kevin Durant and Kyrie. Katie is out. Katie is, is out. Happens. Katie is out. He, wait, Sorry, but wait, wait, I wait. I don't feel bad. Hold on, Drew, Drew, wait. The Nets are a top four seed in the East. Because of Harden. What are you complaining about? Because of Harden. What are you complaining about? Because of Harden. Because oh, of so Kevin Durant. So this is the difference. This is the difference, Riv. James Harden can be around bums. He's gonna get you a top four seed in the in the East. Kevin Steph Durant was Cur- playing. Steph Curry can be around. You you talk about this no offense. Okay, he he had Wiggins last year. He had Draymond last year. Y'all ain't make the playoffs. Harden's wait, gonna get Draymond you there. Sucks wait, wait, Drew, 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 Drew. Oh, that's the West. Wait, wait, that's the West. That's the West. That's the West. That's the difference. Though. Not even that, SJ. When Steph got off the court, they were statistically the worst offense in life. Like, ever. Bro, like, in sick. NBA history. <laughs> like, they were the worst <laughs> offense ever. Like, <laughs> like, ever. So, like, what are you saying, bro? Like, Kevin Durant was carrying. He was backpacking the Nets. I he was the number one MVP before he went down. We as a saying? whole, we as a whole need to feel sympathy for James Harden. And Why? I'm, and I'm, I'm glad that he's going to, he might, he, I'm glad that he's going to ring chase after this offseason. He's doing it already, but. He's going to have to. I, I'm, I hope ring that chase. he he's gets the championship. He's going to start after he leaves the Nets with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. He That's can, he he can go wherever chase. he wants. And if he goes Come to the on. Lakers, you'd love it. Don't bring him here. We don't he's want him. Wherever he wants. Don't bring, don't bring <laughs> him here, man. Yo, he, he comes to L.A. Shoot, man, I'm be I'm be wearing that beer with you, Joel. You know, it's crazy because when you, when you assemble legendary teams like this like the warriors like the big three in miami you have to find those veterans that kind of fit the mike millers the shane battiers the sean livingston you know those type of guys i think the problem with brooklyn is they're playing a lot of young guys you know kessler edwards cam thomas uh what's his name Aaron Aaron sharp. sharp like they're they're playing a lot of those. david duke was playing for a little bit they're playing a lot of young they don't have like their their old guys are not like like they don't it's it's just it's just different with them, and of course it's because Blake and, 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 and Millsap they've been really bad this year too. Nobody but, was but you guys that. are saying Millsap has been bad, but like 
I, and I, I understand it, but I remember in Golden State when David West was just as old as Paul Millsap and he was contributing. Like, it's is it is it like is system it is different just bad or because I, I feel like if Paul Millsap was in Miami, don't think as, if as, Paul as Millsap was in Miami, that, I feel like he'll be doing fine. As a, like, I feel as like a person contribute. that watches the games, I, I personally don't think Steve Nash, for the most part, has given him a fair chance. Um, He's been dealing with personal issues throughout the whole season, so that's why he's really been out. But even when he's even when he's present and available on the roster, Steve Nash just never finds time to put him in the ro- rotations. He'd go with the Dayron Sharp right now, or Kessler Edwards, or a Blake Griffin, who's been horrible this year as well. He would go with those guys over Paul Millsap. So I mean, that's I another think, thing. You guys yeah. don't have a like a coach that's like you know what I'm saying. Like you kind of have a rookie coach essentially. So it's like oh yeah, I, this, this, I, yeah. I, I, I feel like last year, last year he was a redshirt you, rookie to be uh, hey, coach. To be honest. Don't coaching even, is the I'll most ugly part you. of the Y'all game. don't have a coach that can coach. I'll say it for you. Y'all don't have a coach that can coach. <laughs> I'll, I'll just I agree. Run. Steve Nash can't coach, and they don't have an offense. And so that's why basketball players on that team look a whole lot worse than they really are because in order to thrive in Brooklyn's offense, you have to be a one-on-one scorer who can just go get you a bucket. That's why Kyrie looks great. That's why James Harden can stay afloat. That's mm-hmm. why KD looks like the second coming of Jesus. The reason why <laughs> – the reason why – um uh, Wes went over to Golden State and Sean Limiston and all those guys went over there. They were able to play a whole lot better even in their old age is because one, high basketball IQ, and two, because they were in a role and in a system where they were allowed to just be basketball players and not be too limited, but also not have too much freedom. And so you have to be very aware of what kind of basketball players you're picking for your systems and roles. Blake Griffin is going from being a superstar guy when he was with the Clippers to being a solid basketball player with the Detroit Pistons to now trying to figure out how can I fit in this role where I'm probably a fourth or fifth option, but still be the Blake Griffin of old. You can't do it in that offense. And Steve Nash does not make any adjustments since he's been in Brooklyn in order to try to fit any of the players around them uh, to, to make them more comfortable in their strengths. So that's the reason why, like truth be told, if we replace Steve Nash with Mark Jackson, Ooh. even if Kyrie Irving played part time or James Harden, um, you know, was on and off injured, they would have at the very least still been in the Eastern Conference Finals last year or the championship. It's crazy because, Joel, you watched the Draymond interview and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. You said they run a lot of ISO. Mark Jackson, Draymond was talking about it. Mark Jackson runs that type of system where it's like ISO one on one, give your players a lot of uh, confidence, run a couple pin downs. But yeah, you you hit it, you hit it. About are we? Do we? Should we blame Steve Nash for the situation the Nets put him in? A rookie head, rookie head coach putting him in. I mean, he's built a solid team behind him, so it's like you it's not, Marks. Can we put that all all on say, Steve you Nash? Can't blame, you can't blame Steve Sean Nash. Marks. Blame the organization. There you go. No, I, I'm you know, blaming Nash. He he's not a good coach, bro. Steve he's Nash not, is yeah, not a good coach. He's a rookie Steve coach. Is, it don't yeah, matter. But, 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 Steve yeah, Kerr was a rookie coach with the Warriors. Kerr, well, wait, 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 wait. Waiting different. on what? How is that different? That's, di- that's different. How? That's completely different. How? Yo, boy. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond don't have egos. Kevin Durant didn't have an ego. He brought in a new system, which he, he had to really break it in. It's the difference. Steve Nash, and first, first of all, Steve Kerr was on championship winning teams. He's watched Phil Jackson. He's watched Greg Popovich. Those are two completely different Steve minds. Nash was Steve, with Golden State yeah, when they won a championship. No, State. I understand that part, but I'm saying Steve Kerr was learning under Phil. He was watching Phil Jackson work every day while playing for the Bulls. He watched Popovich work every day. And did, like he has like his basketball mind is a lot different than Steve Nash in terms of that coaching. So it's it's different, you know. Like oh, it's so really different. So Riv, So if I if I if I ask you this question, so you have like let's say a Mark Jackson or a Tyrone Lue for a team that's constructed to win a championship. Now you're gonna really choose a a, a rookie inexperienced head coach over no, those chose two qualified candidates. I would have chose Lou. That's what I'm saying, and yeah, I, I think that's, yeah, I think I that's where Tyrone the Lue. I think that's where the you just said head coaching is is one of the most underrated aspects of basketball. I mean, I've been watching. There was a time where Steve Nash actually tricked me into thinking that he was a good coach because he was <laughs> keeping the Nets afloat with all these injuries and all these things going on. But even then, he just has the same issues as last year. Rotations are horrible. I'm not going to blame everything on him because <clears throat> Blake Griffin regressed from last year. Bruce Brown 
albeit he was our small ball five at the time. He had a perfect role. He regressed from last year. Paul Millsap, the Nets didn't expect him to regress and look this old. So Steve Nash has had his barriers to overcome, but good coaches overcome those circumstances. And Steve Nash this season, and even last year, he had issues coaching with his rotations and the lineups that he put on yeah. the court. Like and and just rookie mistakes as coaches. Like Patty Mills it's the other not, night not, was like it's not rookie like mistakes. Four for four from the three. He was our only source of offense. And in the last four. Four minutes of the game, he's going to sit him out until the one minute mark. Why don't you just ride the hot hand? He makes too many critical errors in those type. The of rotational situations. part isn't rookie mistakes. That's a that's a Kurt. Kurt struggles with that <clears throat> till his day. Like he still yeah. struggles with rotation. So I think that's just him being under Kerr. Steve Kerr still struggles till his day with rotation, especially the year when his players was injured. He struggles a lot with that too. So I can see a lot of that from Kerr because Nash was under him too.